Sushant of second year MSc Meteorology. So now I take a privilege to call upon Professor K. Srinivas Rao Garu, the principal of Andhra University College of Science and Technology, onto the dais. And next we have Professor P. Sunita Garu, the head of the Department of the Meteorology and Oceanography. And next we have University. And next, we have Dr. Somna Dattagaru, scientist F, IMD, New Delhi. And next, we have Dr. Mrityanjay Mohapatra, the Director General of Indian Meteorological Department, New Delhi, onto the dais. of lamp. Now we have prayer song by Kaveri. Mm -hmm. 
मनसा स्मरामि महागणपति मनसा स्मरामि महागणपति मनसा स्मरामि वशिष्ठ वामदेवादि वंदित महागणपति मनसा स्मरामि वशिष्ठ वामदेवादि वंदित महागणपति महादेव सुत महादेव सुत गुरु गुहनुत महादेव प्रकाशम शांत महादेव सुत गुरु गुटि प्रकाशम शांत महाकाव्य नाटका प्रिय महाकाव्य नाटका प्रिय महाकाव्य नाटका प्रिय मूषिक वाहन मोदक प्रिय महाकाव्य नाटका प्रिय मूषिक वाहन मोदक प्रिय महागणपति मनस स्मरामि महागणपति मनस स्मरामि महागणपति and next we have welcome to the delegates by ms p s rujita good morning to everyone present here i take this opportunity to welcome you all to a lecture on climate change and extreme weather event i welcome the honorable chief guest dr m mahapatra garu director general indian meteorology krishna mohan garu registrar andhra university professor grace srinivas rao garu principal andhra university college of technology dr somna datta garu scientist f indian meteorological department and all the honorable professors delegates faculty members students and speakers of today's event we have got this opportunity to gather here and talk about climate change extreme weather and statutes relating to that thank you all of you by request professor k srinivas rao garu principal of andhra university of college and college of science and technology to address the gathering very able administrator and vibrant registrar of this university professor prashant mohan chief guest and a renowned earth scientist director general of imd new delhi and dr tata guest of honors and dynamic head of the department sunita many distinguished uh, superannuated faculty of this department and professor naidu and <clears throat> several of the faculty of this department research scholars they rank student friends very good afternoon to you all i am very happy to associate with this lecture relevant and current day needs that every scientist should have the idea about it that is the climate change and extreme order of that by mahapatra ji who is a very very experienced person in this area so 
definitely this lecture will be very useful to stress scholars and anger student friends and not only that today mohapatra ji has signed an mou together with our registrar professor krishna mohan which is very very important and a continuation of the collaboration which was already there and also some more new features it contains a happening mou so sir we are very much thankful to you all the way you came here and selecting our andhra university for that and not only that the importance of data science in way a small talk when we have an interaction during the mou that itself says is experienced and expertized in the area of data analytics particularly in metallurgical applications in various areas agriculture railways climatic change and several of the areas where he has pointed out that so that mou is not only just a, an mou that is useful for giving degrees it will be useful for collaborative research and become a big data center in this so thank you very much for giving your assurance to, to make our andhra university as a very big data center of your iim and not only that also yes Julie considered the request proposed by our registrar to sanction a chair process. We are very much happy. And as you know that this university is a very university which has produced many apt scientists, particularly in metrology and oceanography. and this department got a significant role in indian context of health science not only in india and abroad many of its old students has occupied a very distinguished position in several areas and they have done we have state of art infrastructure and also we are updating always with respect to our infrastructure so in this context i put a small request for you if it are possible please consider providing some infrastructure also not only just thank you the mou as we say the data center and other things if possible give a grant for developing the infrastructure particularly for data center and that type of things where our oceanography and meteorology department people are working on that and there is no need of emphasizing on the topic because all our scientists definitely his lecture will be benefited for the young researchers as well as the students in this and with this words i don't want to take more time most of your time in this we are eagerly waiting for his lecture i know so Abhiji, for coming and helping our university to become a world-class university. Thank you. And now I request Professor P. Sonita Garu, head of the department, to address the gathering. to for my sincere apologies for my voice uh, respected uh, dignitaries on the dais and off the dais it's my privilege to welcome everyone on this uh, auspicious day occasion 
regarding the MOU between IMD and Agra uh, University. Sir, uh, we provided, this department provided a lot of uh, lessons, especially in the field of meteorology, cyclone predictions, and uh, oceanographers. Uh, right now, we are in the back bench, sir. Uh, we want to establish a new collaborative research oriented activities as well as the academic uh, infrastructure for this. We need help and we, we need your encouragement and we need your uh, blessings uh, from IMD side. So, we look forward for enthusiastic uh, and uh, fruitful collaboration between IMD. And uh, both institutes will uh, do much more uh, fruitful act in the upcoming future. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. And now I request Professor V. Krishnamohan Garu, the Registrar of Andhra University, to address the gathering. Good afternoon, all of you. Learned personalities on the day, research students and their young students. I'm so glad to be here on the occasion of signing of MOU, not only completing the task of renewing MOU, I believe the scope of MOU is much wider now. And as a part of new policy, let me thank Dr. Muthunjay Mahapatro, who is DGM IMD, for having consented to renew the MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, in fine tuning the courses offered by the Department of Metrology and Oceanography in a more useful and productive and practical manner so that the students are made job ready. Those skill sets that are needed due to changes that are happening in this particular domain, if you observe, last one decade, I think several platforms, both at national and international level, only one common topic is climate change. We know the importance of putting such topic on discussion. How do we accept the challenges? How do we mitigate the adverse effects of climate change? And how do we follow the future happenings because of climate change? is a very, very dynamic subject. And choosing such a topic on the occasion of his presence, valuable presence, by Dr. M. Mahapatro, to connect all of you to the current trends, because they are the people who are directly involved in this particular domain so that they can tell you what are the recent trends, what are the current challenges that are happening in forecasting, not only weather. Even this data is also very valuable input for disaster management. These days, the weather predictions, they are becoming day by day more accurate unlike earlier times. So if you can forecast what is going to be the weather condition, what remedial actions, responses, mitigation can be done at every level, right from government to individual level in a society where we live, it is everybody's responsibility at the end. So that sensitization through young generation, like students who are pursuing courses in metrology as well as in oceanography, will go a long way in creating not only awareness, interest in these domains, so that future research 
they are going to become future researchers. So any direction given on this context will go a long way in building a research career to those students who are truly interested in investigating reasons for climate change and how do we address those issues concerning climate change, how do we mitigate and manage disasters not to happen in the event of disasters inevitable, whether they are man-made or not, how we are going to mitigate them, what type of planning is needed, execution is required. I think this is where I think a lot of you know, research is going on right now. A lot of discussions are happening in global level platforms because climate change is everybody's concern, irrespective of whether you are a developed country, developing country, or even backward. Everybody should join hands. Unless we unite the whole world, take a stand. Let us not disturb the ecology that leads to climate change. How do we maintain that ecology is an interesting thing. All of us need to put our creative minds together, find out creative solutions, so that the consequences of climate change can be mitigated, right? And I am not a science, but still I know as a common man, what is the danger, what is the consequence, right? What are the implements that climate change is going to create for the future? Today, everybody's talk and agenda is, how do we sustain environment? So that sustainable development is going to be reality. It is not only development, how do we retain the development, sustainable development? How do we, how do we protect the environment? In return, environment protects all of us, whoever is living on this mother planet. That is going to be the very, very useful topic. It need not be, you know, at the level of the scientist effort. It is going to be a common concern of every citizen, every Indian, every global citizen, whether you are living in America, Europe, or India, Asia, anywhere, this is going to be a great concern. A young student, take those current trends from him, because anything that comes from harsh mouth is going to be very official, very precise, going to be the trends for future research, so that how the data provided by IMD can be put to maximum use productively and how we connect all those fragmented data with the technologies that are evolving. I believe these days uh, production is done, modeling is done with the help of very improved technologies, even including the artificial intelligence is used. You see, data science, data analytics, right? Big data. And data architecture and design and data interface. You know, so far we used to believe only, you know, some data is provided. How these data applications, they are wide ranging now. Even for agriculture, the agricultural economy is highly dependent on these productions, predictions, and forecasts. So, exactly, you know, such. Data science is going to help us, facilitate us in improving livelihood of the mankind on this planet it is going to be a great concern of everyone, whether you are representing government or an academic researcher or you are a common man, climate change denominator to everybody. So I take the opportunity of thanking profusely Dr. M. Mahapatra, DZM, IMD, and also Somnath Datta, who is DDGM training, for having come here. And while speaking the opening remarks, our principal has explained how important you know, data science, he being statistician, he knows what type of modeling can be done once data is given, how that modeling is provided, you know, forecasts which are close to reality. That is what is needed today. A lot of you know, research is going on. And any such indications in the form of current trends enormously help the current researchers and future student who is going to become a researcher in this particular domain to keep themselves job ready or what type of skill sets are going to be necessary 
to make themselves employment ready is a great contribution by the presence of uh, Mahapatroji and uh, Swamathji and I am very very thankful for such a, an initiative of connecting you know people who are expert in this domain with a domain science in a department like metrology and oceanography wherein you know the by them is going to be highly helpful to the faculty to the researchers to the students and on behalf of the department on behalf of andhra university for signing mou and for agreeing to address the students in this one day maybe uh, one hour interaction with the student definitely is going to build confidence in all of us that we are also living up to the expectation of the society in discharging our role as an individual towards contributing a congenial environment in which sustainable development is going to be a reality. Thank you all. Thank you. And now I would like to have scientist F. IMT New Delhi to address the gathering. Thank you. <clears throat> Dignitaries on the dais, and dignitaries on the other sides of the dais. My dear uh, students, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, good afternoon to everyone. First of all, I am uh, very much thankful to Andhra University Authority, especially this department for giving me an opportunity to speak a few words standing in the task. So we all understand that for basically two purposes, one is our MOU, another one is uh, a listening lecture from DGM sir. Now, we all are experiencing because whether was there what, whether is there, whether will be there. But one thing every all citizens nowadays are experiencing that extremeness of the weather has been increased manifold. And this extremeness of the weather is being attributed to, to the climate change. Our DGM sir, I, I am a too small person to talk about him. Even if you type in the Google, you will find about him. He is an authority in this topic. And besides the cyclones, he will talk on this thing and it will be very much beneficial to the students, not only to the students, to all the professionals in this field, including the general public, everyone. Now, regarding the MOE, one thing I would like to tell that India Meteorological Department and Andhra University both happen to be pioneered in the meteorological education in India. On the university, an India Meteorological Department as an informal educational institute. So now question is, when both the institutes are pioneer in their meteorology education, then why there should not be a connection? So realizing this thing, our senior officers earlier, they, uh, even though it was delayed in 2010, I think, that first MOU was signed. But since the MOU was, uh, MOU was, uh, has a particular, every MOU has a particular life. Uh, once the, you know, that life has been uh, 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 end, then, then some new, new things came. Then again, we thought that let it be uh, renewed. So, our, I am very much thankful to our DJ sir. Within a very short notice, he spared his time. He has gone through the MOU. He discussed, he spared his time to have a virtual meeting. And I had the opportunity to apprise him all the pros and cons of the uh, MOU. And ultimately, I had the opportunity to convince him. And he took the initiative that let us not make, well, let us go this month itself and sign the MOU. And today, in this auspicious occasion, that work has been done. So I am very much thankful to all of you. I don't want to uh, talk too much because we have to listen from um, Mahapatra sir. So it is a very interesting, very educative, and very fantastic topic. Thank you.
and now i would like to take a privilege to introduce the presenter of dr mrutyunjay mohapatra dr mrutyunjay mohapatra was born on 12th august 1965 he completed his masters and doctoral degrees in physics in the year 1988 he served as junior scientific assistant in interim test range drdo balasore odisha later on he also worked as lecturer in physics in dk college jale in indian meteorological department pune started in the year 1992 he joined as meteorolog meteorologist grade 2 trainee afterwards he served as a director for regional meteorological center imd guwahati and also national weather forecasting center imd new delhi in the national weather forecasting center he worked in various capacities scientist e scientist f and scientist g and now he is the director general of meteorology imd new delhi since 2019 his research work and scientific work mainly based on weather forecasting and cyclone warning including monsoon low pressure systems heavy rainfall thunderstorm and forecasting verification published 106 research papers in various peer reviewed journals books edited are 20 his h index is 20 i10 is 45 and rg score is 32.71 he has projects and organized international national trainings and workshops delivered many invited or popular lectures in india and abroad and developed three movies on imd dr mohapatra was elected as a president indian meteorological society in 2020 he is a life national societies he received honorary doctor of science from fakir mohan university and kalinga institute of industrial technology odisha he got felicitated by shri navin patnayak honorable chief minister of odisha for outstanding contribution in disaster management he got recognition as guide for phd work in banaras hindu university amity university and iit delhi so now i would like to request dr mrutyunjay mohapatra garu to address the gathering before that registration so now i would like to now i would like to felicitate the guests
Auspicious occasion to sign an MOU with Andhra University, and I congratulate all in Andhra University and India Agriculture Department for successful signing of the MOU. I further hope that under the umbrella of this MOU, both IMD and Andhra University will work together, not only for capacity building and training, but also for for research and developmental activities. As other speakers were telling earlier, and to under Vice Chancellor, there is enough scope to work together. Though it has been a legacy, it is a tradition, middle to east from the very beginning itself, it has resulted many new talents, it has resulted many development of the tools and technologies. It has resulted in understanding of the science of meteorology, including atmospheric science and oceanic science. It has resulted in capacitating the National Meteorological and Hydrological Agency like India Meteorological Department to execute its responsibility to provide support to the public, disaster managers and various sector holders within the country and also in the region. So therefore, I congratulate all present faculties and former faculties with whom we have been already directly associated in the past years and will continue to be in association with faculty and students. Considering the support from India Metrology Department, I want to mention here that India Metrology Department has grown over the years from 1875, and especially in recent years, there has been a significant improvement with respect to the service IMD, with the improvement of observational systems, improvement in numerical modeling, forecasting, early warning, and applications to various sectors. At the same time, India Metrology Department as a historical organization has stored all the old data. You can find the observations even from 1743, or you can have the observations digitally from 1901, the basic observations, and also 
they derived observations parameters or disasters with event so that is an asset that should be exploited that should be used by the students by the startup groups by the faculties by the institutes as all of us know that meteorology is a, is a multidisciplinary science so therefore there is a scope for all branches of science be it computer science physics chemistry mathematics or something else even biology now people talk about the bio development so there is also scope for them to work together and we are talking about the social science yes recently world meteorology organization has decided that science and social science and there is enough scope to convert the science into the knowledge base of the general public to convert the science into a public language which can be easily understood which can be easily enabled or which can easily trigger the actions by the disaster managers in general public so there comes the role of the social science it can also work be an economist or be an historian or be a sociologist or be an anthropologist you can work together with the science of meteorology and by that way we can reach out and serve the society if you take an example of science and society meteorology is such a science which is directly linked with the society and especially in the view of the climate change which is going on which is a reality the importance of this integration of various scientists institutions becomes very much essential to serve society so in this regard uh, there is enough scope therefore it is open we have sufficient data that we can provide for the purpose you may think about the data science which is talking of now but usually the data science has been there in the past and few months back i think all of you might be knowing that dwarak expired at the age of 101 so what he was he was a data scientist and he did not play any mathematics he did not went for any dynamics he has not used any numerical models but the model which is given so far is not challenged by anyone in the world his model stands for analyzing the satellite images to identify the location and intensity of the tropical cyclones so that is the scope at that time he used one by one comparing and make Matching with observational data from the Arctic Ocean or the North Atlantic, which is being used by the other ocean basins. So, therefore, you just think of about that. Meteorology is not far behind. There has been data science. There has been better methods, but in some way or the other. But now the computing power has come up. We can utilize that. We can have data analytics. We can have data informatics. Also, you can have artificial intelligence, machine learning. And we believe now in the concept of the dual engine. we can go for numerical modeling we can go for the conventional observational systems and forecasting at the same time also we can utilize that is linked to machine learning so that both can complement with each other and we can have the viable alternative and more appropriate service to the nation and the region so with this background um, i don't do mention one thing that someone was in uh, uh, introducing me as uh, president by ms so i just remember that i uh, Professor Haskar Rao is here. See the contribution of this uh, contribution to Indian society by all of us, and I really congratulate and even mention here that all of you might be knowing that Professor Haskar Rao has donated money, institution award to encourage the science of meteorology through Indian Meteorological Society. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so society has also grown. I include the social scientists now. The time has come. it should not be restricted only to the people working in meteorology but the people working in the application of meteorology in various sectors so we can work so i am feeling very happy on um, this auspicious day that we have got enough support from the vice chancellor and also registrar and all the faculties and i should thank sunita and the team here for making it a reality with dr datta from india meteorological department so we will march forward we will demonstrate that this collaboration is one of the identified illustrated example which has been so far so and it will be become in a separate manner that in the changing scenario in the changing scenario of application of data science and artificial intelligence in the changing scenario of the climate change it is said 
on metrology, we can also work together. We can also come up with the new avenues, new opportunities, which can be applied for betterment of the society. So with these few words, I'll go for conventional presentations. I will talk about the climate change and extreme weather. So please share uh, the PPT. So, next, next, next. Okay. Next. so I have common principles which all of us know, but I'll just uh, the students uh, say I'll just talk about it. But all of us know that the weather climate system, what we look at, it is uh, I used to say it's a byproduct of the interaction among the various spheres. And all of us know that here are various spheres. We have the art. The solid earth, we have got the lithosphere, surrounding solid earth. Also, we have got the atmosphere, that is the gases surrounding the solid earth. We also have the hydrosphere, that includes, of course, the cryosphere, that is the oceans and the ice. Then also, we have got the biosphere, we have got the living beings, we have got the human beings, we have got the animals, we also have got the plants and other living things also. So, if you just, uh, uh, sorry, next slide. I can change the slide here? No. Okay. If I just little, uh, if I go a little uh, in depth, you will find that uh, in each year, in each sphere itself, there are various activities which are also not independent of each other. They are also interacting with each other within the sphere and also from one sphere to another sphere. For example, let us look at um, the atmosphere. The atmosphere consists of a number of gases. You have got nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor, and many others, ozone, etc. And at the same time, you have got the solid earth, where you have got many human activities. You have got the biotic lives and also biotic lives. And all these activities are also releasing various types of gases into the atmosphere. At the same time, we have got the sun, which is the ultimate source of energy. And the earth and earth is emitting radiations, and as a result, we are getting the solar and earth interactions. And these interactions lead to the water cycle. And from the water cycle, you get the clouds. From clouds again, you get water coming to the earth. So there is continuous exchange of the heat from the surface of the earth to the atmosphere, and also there is wind exchange, and also the precipitation in the exchange. So it is not only happening only to the solid arc, but also it is happening from the various parts of the solid arc, that is the ocean and uh, the ice also. In addition to all this natural mechanism that is happening, there are also the anthropogenic activities. There are activities because of the human interventions. We have got um, the various phenomena occurring from the industrial age, 1850, the industrial revolutions. So there has been additional burdening of the atmosphere by the human being. So that is also another source, which is also um, imbalancing the interaction between the various spheres and hence leading to various types of uh, phenomena. But whatever it may be, if you look at various types of weather and climate events occurring in the surface of the earth, you will find that it starts with a very small uh, activity like in the summer season, if you are sitting outside your home, you will find that sometimes some dry leaves are just rotating and going up. It is mainly because of the heating and convection and it is going up. And along with that, whatever it comes, that also goes up. So if it is dust particles, if there is no rain, it isn't dry, the dust particles also, dust also moves and goes up. So that we call it the dust debris. And if there is a, some kind of water vapor in this surface of the earth, then that water vapor also goes up and gets condensed at a certain level. And hence the cloud particles forms. Hence, we got sometimes stratus clouds or stratocumulus clouds or cumulus clouds. And cumulus clouds leads to sometimes the cumulus clouds or to thunderstorm activities. And from 
USA, or Europe, etc. The phenomenon is called fronts, and fronts occur in the hands of the But in our tropical systems, what we find actually, we get um, from this computer cloud cluster sometimes that could be the clustering of these individual cloud cells, and hence it can lead to some kind of direct upward motion, and hence creation of a vacuum in the surface of the R, and then vacuum is called as the low pressure. So the pressure is low at a particular area of the surroundings, we call it low pressure. And basically, we define a low pressure when within a 5 degree to 5 degree box, the pressure is falling as compared to the surface star by at least 2 hectopascal. So, by the way, the low forms, uh, because of the tropical nature uh, near this region, and basically the process which goes towards the is a convection, 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 that is heating and making it convection. And from low pressure area, you can have the depressions and the cyclone storms, etc. So that is a tropical phenomenon. At the same time, the winter season, if uh, we know that it's going down, so in the northern part of the India, so you can see find that there is subsidence of subsidence of air in the subsidence area leads to high pressure cells. And these high pressure cells um, leads to no weather, where low pressure systems lead to the severe weather. So highs and lows are also a part of the uh, weather systems across the world. Especially the tropical regions and basic mechanics becomes the convection or the temperature difference in the upper latitudes. Now, going a little further, you will find that there are certain areas, seasons, where the, the convective activity becomes predominant and leads to many different densities of the lotus systems and hence the uh, high amount of rainfall activity. So, one of such phenomena is the monsoon. We have two types of monsoon, southeast monsoon and northeast monsoon. And so as you have to know that southeast monsoon extends from the upper America. That is almost the entire globe is covered by the southeast monsoon in the tropical belt. And as a lot of smaller monsoon is like, it's 70 uh, 90% rainfall in the country. So all these phenomena uh, is the large scale system. Monsoon is the planetary scale system, therefore. Whereas high pressure and local systems are the synergy scale systems occurring over an area of about 500 to 1000 kilometers. But when you consider number storms, it goes up to the region of 10 to 100 kilometers. And right when you go to dust devils or tornadoes, that occurs within one kilometer or like one kilometer or something like that. So, therefore, there are various types of spatial uh, and various types of spatial scale of the dust storms in a few minutes, few hours, clouds, maybe a few hours. When you go to the storms, maybe three to five days. Uh, something that like is a person, etc. But under some, it may be three hours or six hours and next. So, the life period of this weather systems also change depending upon their size. So, size and the life period are related with the, each other in this weather climate systems. So, when we talk beyond the monsoon systems, which occurs within a season or so, like southwest monsoon, June, September, of this monsoon, the October, December, we have uh, some kind of uh, large scale systems. Now people talk about the well, you know, Lanina or Southern Oscillations, and so Now it is long back, actually, Walker was the National Library in the Meteorological Department. So he thought that yes, we will find something which is governing concern, and hence he searched for the parameters across the globe. Then he found that there is some kind of seizure in the pressure that he came that way, and he uh, established the work of circulations. And water circulation is created there for both to British India at the time. And this water circulation, and I also know the hydro circulation, due to this circulation phenomena, which leads to different types of flow. Now, when you come up, uh, now all of you know about the Lino and Southern Oscillations, and they are associated with this water circulation. And uh, when you move further uh, beyond this phenomena, that is beyond the year, we come across the decadal variability. So, there is many work. Uh, that there is some kind of clustering of events. In certain events, in certain years, in a particular decade, you will find that number of cyclones are increasing, the number of cyclones are higher. In certain decades, you will find that the number of cyclones are less. Similarly, you will find certain decades where monsoon has the tendency to have higher rainfall. In certain decades, you will find that monsoon has less rainfall. This is called the decadal behavior or epochal behavior of weather systems. We have found out a 60 year epochal behavior. The three for example, people talk about the now is transitioning to good monsoon activity. The last 30 years, 
over the area where the more frequent droughts could be uh, experienced in India. But next 30 years, for us, transition is going on after the from, coming from next decade, the number of flood events may increase because of this phenomenon. Now, finally, what we call because uh, we talk about warming from the climate change, and that occurs um, in a century scale. At least, if you want to talk about the climate change and the other thing, you should consider data of at least 100 years. If you are considering data of less period, then it becomes the variable. You can find out what the variation from year to year, annual variable to year to year, but you want to really examine whether the climate is changing, then you should consider a lot of data, long period of data. For example, 100 years or so, then only you can say that whether the climate is changing or not. So that it becomes a challenge. There are many people may talk about the climate change, but as a scientist, as a professor, as a, as a faculty who is working on the meteorology, so if he or she wants to make a statement that there is a change in climate, he should thought, think about at least long period data. If you not a hundred years, hundred years data, at least also fifty years. With thirty years of data or twenty years of data, no one should talk about the climate change. That's the climate variability that cannot impact the climate change. So. By the way, we'll, uh, we see now that in the global warming or climate change has been established with a lot of flow valley, which also find in India region. That we'll see. Next slide, please. Now let us look at what is happening globally. If you just look at the global temperature in the, uh, uh, in the recent years, you'll find that, for example, say, here, in the 500, So what you find actually from the pre industrial period, so, 1850 is considered as uh, the year mark after the addition of the pre-industrial period. So, there is an uh, increase in temperature. There is a sharp increase in temperature. Kind of the um, um, so there is a sharp increase in temperature. And uh, as for the spectrum given by IPCC, it is about 1.2 degrees Celsius per uh, 100 years, that is the same, uh, the rise in temperature of the surface of the Arctic. Now, if I consider two different uh, uh, time series, for example, one is the land surface and the ocean. What you find actually, this is the ocean, the blue one is the ocean, and this is the land surface. You find that yes, in both the cases, temperature is rising. There is no doubt in that. It is not simply that land surface is increasing, but the ocean surface of the temperature is rising. But land surface temperature is rising more, it is about 3 degrees per hour, So, the point that uh, the climate change is global. It is irrespective of land and uh, ocean, but the rate of climate change can be different, rate of change in temperature can be different. And this is the entire surface part. If you consider different parts of the globe, you will also find that the rate is different. Next slide, please. Uh, next. Uh, go on, you just go on quickly. So, what you find actually the climate change globally has been uh, monitored by certain indicators. The one, there are various indicators. One indicator is the glaciers. It is found that glaciers are melting, and hence the amount of uh, glacier is decreasing. Similarly, if you consider temperature over land, yes, it is decreasing. Snow cover, it is decreasing. Permafrost retreating forward, there is effect. And tree line shifting forward and upward. The spring coming earlier, and uh, spaces migrating forward and upward. Next, please continue. Please continue. So, humidity in the atmosphere is increasing. Yes, Especially in the lower atmosphere, and the temperature of the oceans are also increasing. The temperature near surface is uh, also increasing. Sea surface temperature is also increasing. The sea level also rising. And there are also know that the people say that the uh, Indian cities in the, on the coast are more threatened by the rising sea level. Next, please. Sea ice also will find that it is decreasing. Ice sheets are also decreasing. The content is increasing. That is, the uh, ocean is getting warmer. The ocean content it, it means it is not simply the sea surface temperature, but up to the um, uh, thermocline layer, the temperature is also increasing. Next, please. Now, let us see the years for all these indicators. Now, I will not put up all the indicators. I just put up here, say, for example, Arctic sea summer ice extent. If you just look at Arctic sea summer ice extent, it is decreasing. And decreasing very sharp. In the recent years, from 1980 onwards, we find that there is a significant decrease in Arctic summer sea ice extent. Similarly, if you consider global average of upper ocean heat content, you will find that yes, it was not only so much in the recent uh, 60s, it was almost you can say it was uh, 
that in the normal years, but since 1980s, we find that there is a certain increase with the normal rate, there is a certain in person in content. Then global average sea level, to just look at, it is going on in the enterprise has been significant in the recent years. So what do you find that there is a global average specification, if you just look at uh, over the land, it also increased in 1950, to the faster rate of increase in 1980. Significant increase in precipitation in many parts of the world. Okay, but luckily, all India as a whole, if you just consider the rainfall, it's not so much decreased. But uh, uh, we will show that in huge areas, in huge areas, the so increase in frequency of heavy precipitation it is a global fact. In the tropical region, the frequency of heavy precipitation is increasing, including India. More intense and longer droughts since 1970s, particularly in the tropics and tropics. So you may say that by then, precipitation is increasing, then how drought is increasing? This is mainly because that in variability, internal variability, then for is also increasing. And hence, therefore, the potential for the drought has also increased. The cold days, cold nights, and frost less frequent, it is obvious, and the temperature is rising. You should not expect that cold waves to be more frequent and more intense. But hot days, hot nights, and heat waves are more frequent and more intense, of course, including India. Of course, the evidence of increase of intense tropical cyclone activity. So please, may I please uh, look at the sentence. Intense tropical cyclone activity. Number of tropical cyclones are not increasing, but the intense tropical cyclones, for example, extreme series of cyclones from our Aragon Sea, is increased. In various sources, so it is increasing. Next, please. Ah, so, this is the India case. If you just look at the surface air temperature of India. So, what is happening actually? So, um, so this is the, the histograms, the bars are the uh, annual average temperature. And uh, this is the trend dotted line, the trend line, and this is the moving average uh, going for that. So what do you find actually? So uh, gradual increase, you can say, but uh, from 1970 onwards, you just see, there is a, if you just put the trend line here, you'll find that from 1990 onwards, you'll find that it's a increase, and it's going on increasing over the years, the annual temperature. But if I look at um, uh, the trend, what I find that um, uh, the annual mean air temperature uh, this year, 2021, this is the fifth one this year uh, since 1901. And these are the years you can find out. And 16, and 9, and 17, and 10. That means all these after finding all the warmest years in India. Now, if I just look at um, and the mean temperature, what has been the trend, so mean temperature, that means day temperature, night temperature together, it is average. It is 0 0.6 degrees Celsius for 100 years. Maximum temperature is 0 0.99 degrees Celsius for 100 years. Almost one degree rise is there for 100 years. Minimum temperature is 0 0.26 degrees Celsius for 100 years. That means in our region, the maximum temperature, day temperature is increasing. Already we are a tropical country, and day temperature is increasing here more intensely. That means more, we are moving towards more heated conditions. And more disasters because of the <coughs> heat wave. The temperature is also increasing. That means biotic life which were surviving because of the lower temperature is a threat for them. Of course, we will not have a threat because we will not have any cold wave conditions more severely. We will have less cold wave conditions. But we cannot rule out any cold wave conditions. Cold wave conditions can be there, but their frequency and intensity could be less. But if I consider season wise, then winter season it is 0.78 degrees Celsius rise in temperature. And this is uh, pre monsoon season, it is 0 0.35, monsoon season is 0 0.34, post monsoon season is 0 0.44. But so you find that uh, winter is becoming warmer. Okay, winter is becoming warmer. So that's what we have taken into consideration those who are working in uh, biology and biotic life and biodiversity, etc. So they should take care of that. Uh, what will happen to those species which are surviving, who are rising, especially in the winter? And um, uh, it is followed by uh, the post monsoon season. So, that from October to December, then January to February, we get a month's wear temperature more uh, intense, right? Next, please. So, now let us look at the spatial distribution of annual mean temperature and their trends. This red one indicates the rising trend, blue one indicates the falling trend, and white one indicates there is no trend. So, if you just look at that, what you find is major part of the country, major part of the country, except the Indonesian plants. The temperature is uh, rising, and some parts of the peninsula are here and here and there. But maybe the this area there is no rising temperature, uh, some area there is uh, fall also, but major parts we have got rising uh, temperature. Next, please. So now let us look at um, uh, 
Uh, what happens actually? If we just look at the temperature rising, that means mean temperature of the substrate bath is rising. So what happens actually? This is the black one. Say for example, this is the current status, and this is the prediction that temperature will rise. So that is mean temperature is shifting towards the right. So by the way, what happens actually? If you consider temperature as a normal distribution, temperature is a normal distribution. Okay. So we have two tails. There is a here the left hand side tails are getting little bit shifting towards the cold condition is decreasing at the same time. The warm condition is increasing. Okay, part of the conditions is increasing. Therefore, with increasing mean temperature, you can conclude that there could be more frequent and more intense heat of conditions in any part where temperature is rising. Next case. Now let us look at the various natural hazards occurring in India, and we know that um, uh, India is uh, such a country where we have about 7500 kilometers of uh, coastline. And only coast lines are subject to the coastal hazards. And the most of the coastal hazards we picked up the cyclones and followed by, of course, functional heavy rainfall, thunderstorms, etc. And here we have also experienced special other and Odisha experience uh, very intense heat conditions in the summer. Now, this is the uh, tracks uh, we have the one of our agency, and we have got the bimodal characters of tropical cyclones, unlike other ocean basins. This is the only ocean basin where we have got two cyclone seasons. Although it is one second season extending from August to say November in the northern hemisphere, locally in the southern hemisphere. But here we have two monsoon seasons, uh, two uh, cyclone seasons. One is roughly April to June, other one is October to December. In between, we have a monsoon which does not allow the system to be intense. There could be marginal cyclones, but usually it will not get cyclones in monsoon season. <coughs> okay. So, so this is the study we have done actually. It's, uh, District wise study in which districts are more prone, you will find that Andhra, Odisha, and West Bengal districts are most prone. This is a coastal Andhra place, including uh, starting with say West and East Kodabri, of whose that is uh, is uh, Krishna, most department area, will have the most prone uh, area where you can have very intense cyclones. And in this impact, it will be said that based on number of uh, frequency, the number of frequency of cyclones, intensity of cyclones. And also in terms of the heavy rainfall caused by the cyclones and the wind caused by the cyclones, and storm surge caused by the cyclones. All these parameters are taken into consideration to identify which uh, districts are more intense. Here we are getting more intense because, uh, in fact, because uh, here uh, the storm surge is quite high in the cyclone area. Uh, whatever it may be. So, this is a seismology that half I am not thinking about that. And here are the floods, um, and this is uh, red zones are the flood prone areas, and this is the drought prone areas. And here it is the monsoon season you can find. You have got much rainfall along the west coast in the northwestern states. Many times you will see that uh, monsoonal rainfall is dominated by the Orumna. Wherever you have got Orumna, you have got more rainfall there. This region, this region. But another uh, factor is there. Monsoon rainfall is dominated by number one is Orumna, second one is the low pressure systems. You have got the many low pressure There are 13 low pressure systems occurring in monsoon season over the head. Move across uh, central India. Especially Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, and they cause intense rainfall activity. Therefore, this is another secondary zone where you've got uh, much rainfall. So, these are the two important factors. And monsoon drop usually passes through Bengal or Ellabad and Kolkata, and south of monsoon drop gets more rainfall. About two degrees south of monsoon drop gets the maximum rainfall. Therefore, this is the obvious region where you get uh, more rainfall activity. <coughs> okay, then you have got thunderstorms. Uh, this is just an example of what happens to thunderstorms. You've got the down graph, you have the up graph, and the down graph, up graph, you have the lightning, etc. And uh, cross separation. So, therefore, you have got uh, multi other scenario with the thunderstorm. You have got thunderstorms associated with lightning, associated with the hailstorms, associated with the squalls, associated with the bustiness, and also associated with the. It's a first know that in the month of April, Assam gets flooded because of the thunderstorms. Okay, so thunderstorms are the various types of characters in different parts of the country. But however, it is a hazard. It is a major hazard nowadays because we have been able to reduce the loss of life due to cyclones. But we are not able to reduce the loss of life due to the lightning. Number of deaths of lightning is increasing. About 20 million people die every year because of the lightning. So these are some examples. This is an example of the thunderstorm squall, as you can see. This is a horse of the red squall lines. They will get affected in the radar picture, in the satellite picture. How it just becomes. So this is another map so that is called um, the the um, frequency of thunderstorms, um, you can find out that the uh, thunderstorm occurs in the heaven, uh, it is uh, no such boundary. But frequency is maximum over eastern and northeastern, and it is called as Norwester, so Calvary Sarkin, because it kills people there. 
But at the same time, you can find that maximum thickness is also there. And the road near Kerala and Nagarur, you get maximum functional activity. Similarly, over Jamal Kashmir and Nagarur, also you get higher rainfall, higher thunderstorm. Next, please. Now let us look at what is happening to the trends in India. So this is the behavior of trends. This is data from 1961 to 2021 we have considered. Um, uh, what you find actually, this red one is uh, the rising trend, blue one is the falling trend. So there is a rising trend here, okay? And there is also rising in southern peninsula. What you find here is the southern peninsula, including the major part of Andhra Pradesh um, and Telangana, you find that uh, temperature is rising and due to conditions are increasing. So what you find it? Usually, if you ask the heat core zone, heat core zone is the central part of the country and northern plains. But in the recent years, data shows that the heat period frequency is increasing in southern peninsula. That means not only the frequency of the spatial region, the region of occurrence of heat is extending. Now it is concerned the cold air conditions. The cold air conditions, yes. As expected, it is falling, then the falling trend in other parts of the country, but still there are certain areas here you see Telangana or South Odisha. Maybe here we don't have any trend, but uh, it shows there's some kind of rising trend is there. So it is not like that the temperature rising that everywhere the cold air will fall. It's not like that. There are certain pockets in the regional variations that could be the rise in cold air condition in northern parts of the peninsula. <coughs> Next, please. Now let's look at the rainfall. If I look at the annual rainfall for the country as a whole, we find that there is no such trend. There is almost uh, say about 88 centimeters or something like that, and there is the interior variation. It is end up, but the total amount of rainfall does not vary over the years. Next, please. Now let's look at the various uh, seasons. If I just look at the country, the winter season, the red line is the dotted red line is the trend. So what you find here? There is a decreasing trend in winter rainfall. So, what could be the reason? The in winter, the month of January, February, we used to get maximum rainfall in the northwest India, especially Jammu and Kashmir, Madhya Pradesh, Uttarakhand, near the Indians. That means the rainfall activity due to emotional disturbances which affects northwest India is decreasing. It is a fact because you prove that uh, intense western disturbances frequency affecting northwest India is decreasing in terms of rainfall activity. Well, let's take the pre-monsoon season. There is no chance. You can see that uh, the red light does not have any chance. It's almost nearby to the next line. Next, please. And let's look at the monsoon season. There is no trend. Almost equal. It is, there is no such trend. This is post-monsoon season also. There is no such trend. Only worry is that the northwest India and is decreasing in the winter season. Okay. <coughs> next, please. Now, let's look at the heavy rainfall. So, as I was telling you, that heavy rainfall frequency is increasing in the tropical belt. This is a dry days, this is rainy days, this is heavy rainfall days. Now, what you find actually? The dry days are also increasing here. Okay? Rainy days are decreasing here. So, in the indo pacific plants, so dry days are increasing, rainy days are decreasing. That means, and, but the rainfall is not well distributed over a period of time. It is occurring over a few days before the normal is occurring. Now let us take the heavy rainfall. If you look at the heavy rainfall, the heavy rainfall is also decreasing there, but in the central bend, in the peninsular area, there are many regions where the heavy rainfall frequency is increasing. Red is increasing trend, two weeks is decreasing. Next, please. Now let us look at the, uh, the final results because of this variation in rainfall. So this is the rainstorms. So what you find actually is what is happening actually rainstorms. Rainstorms in the event which is thousands of kilometers in diameter and where rainfall continuously occurs for at least two days and rainfall exceeds several, more than 25 centimeters. Therefore, rainstorms are usually associated with the floods. And where does rainstorm occurs? Rainstorm mainly occurs in the monsoon tropic and monsoon world region, starting with Odisha and Northern Pradesh. It extends towards uh, uh, southern parts of UP and here towards Gujarat. So, therefore, the, these are the uh, area where it experiences the floods also. So what you find is that these rainstorms are on BG. Rainstorm frequency is increased. At the same time, if you look at the trend, this is the rainy days. Yes, there is uh, for, uh, for the country as a whole, it shows some kind of increasing trend. Trend is increasing, but actually the heavy rainfall is increasing, light to moderate rainfall is decreasing. Next please. Now let us look at the floods. The flood frequency we just look at year by year, it shows an increasing trend in the country. And this is the drought. Drought um, is a very tricky issue. The measurement of drought is uh, 
and define the AS indices. So you have to consider one index of the SPI. So standard precipitation index. This is the period from 1960, and this is the period from 1961 to 2020. So I can find it. The frequency of how is quite higher in the recent years as compared to the previous years. That I told you. Then the decadal and epochal behavior of the monsoon. Last three decades, it was the below <coughs> normal monsoon years. The frequency of drought could be expected to be high. But the other point is that even if total amount of rainfall is not so many percent, the frequency of flood is increasing, frequency of drought is increasing. This is mainly because of the increase in inter annual variability of monsoon rainfall. Next, please. Now, let's look at the frequency of tropical cycles. The frequency of tropical cycles globe, this is the globe. What you find is the total number of frequency of slight decrease in grand centimeters. Okay, you can find it. But this is the intense uh, uh, tropical cycle. So, what you find actually that uh, hurricane force, that is uh, in our term, it is a very severe cycle of So, it is not showing anything. It is almost the uh, uh, same. So, total number of counts, that is, uh, total number of frequency of cyclones shows slightly decrease in trend, but intense cycles do not show the decrease. Uh, not so early. Uh, in some basic cities, so in basic Let's look at North Indian Ocean Basin. The same thing, the number of cycles we consider, cycles from an EVO, is not showing any increasing trend. Of course, in the last two, three years, 2019, 2020, 2021, we have got a higher number of uh, uh, cycles. But this year, again, the number of cycles has been less. We have not regulated cycles so far. Uh, but extremely severe cycles, if you just consider, it is not showing any increasing trend. It is showing almost set. Uh, Next, please. Now, let's look at uh, land falling cycles. This is the land falling cycles from 27 to 2018, global frequency. So, what you find, you can see here the category 1, 2, and this is category 3, 4, 5. So, category 1, 2 cycle, if you just consider, is a decrease in trend. But category 3, 4, 5, if you just consider, there is some kind of increase in trend or no trend. It is not decreasing. Similarly, if you consider the frequency of land falling cycles in North Indian Ocean, here also you find that the cycles from and above this big line. Is showing the decrease in trend. Severe cycles are also actually considered to be the also decrease in trend. But if you consider extremely severe cycles, you find that there is no decrease in trend between the set. Next. Now, if you look at the projected changes uh, of the climate, uh, changes uh, of the climate uh, as uh, studied by our Center for Climate Research uh, uh, in the Institute of Climate Ecology, so what it shows is that. Um, a change in uh, annual precipitation uh, occurs is expected over different parts of the country. Some examples are just shown here. The Hindu Himalayas, for example, it shows that this, uh, it will do that uh, with some kind of change. Uh, like this is RCP 4.5, this is RCP 8.5. So you can see that it is expected to increase. Now, change in surface air temperature over the Hindu Himalayas, if you just look at, uh, you will find that yes, surface temperature is expected to increase under RCP 4.5 and also RCP. 8.5 is expected to increase. A similar change in summer monsoon precipitation over India, if you just look at, yes, uh, uh, it is uh, expected to rise because there is increasing slope, there is increasing like that. And then uh, you can have more precipitation in this part of the climate. Similar change in surface temperature of tropical Indian ocean, also if you just look at, yes, it is expected to rise further. And uh, change in surface air temperature over India, if you just look at, yes, it is expected to. Rise uh, with this warming climate. Yes, next please. Now, this is the spatial distribution. Uh, if you just look at um, what is happening and what could be uh, in uh, future, also the similar is found in different regions. It is not uniform that everywhere there will be uniform rise in temperature, uniform rise in precipitation. It will be different from ocean to ocean in, and from one region to another region. Therefore, there is a need to have the regional climate change model. So, therefore, there are various types of data instead of uh, finding out the climate change uh, in its impact uh, in global basis or national basis, we should go for the state basis and district basis. But then, of course, the national plan is there. Under the national plan, the actions are being taken up by the each state government. Climate, uh, um, climate action cell has been established in each and every state under the standpoint action plan of the government of India, prime minister's standpoint action plan. So under that, uh, RCM, the regional climate modeling, can be taken up, and people are taking up also in different states. And there is enough scope for our university to work in that direction on regional climate modeling to understand the climate change at sub-regional level and its impact in future. Next, please. So these are the observations, and I think so, okay, I can just see the same thing uh, I have already told. Uh, next, please. 
Ah, now let us look at uh, the sustainable development goal. We, uh, we know that UNFCC, we know IPCC, there are many bodies uh, which have come up with policy planning in the global level. And that is taken care when you go for a meeting in COP27 and COP26. And what you find there, there are 17 action points, sustainable development goals, there are 17 goals. Out of the 17, the number 13 is meant for us, plan action plans. So 13, the 13th sustainable development goal is the plan action. So what it says actually, it says that uh, we should strengthen resilience and adapt the capacity to climate related disasters. Indicate climate change measures in policies and planning, build knowledge and capacity to meet climate change, implement the UN framework for research on climate change, promote mechanisms to raise capacity for planning and management. So if you just look at the very sharply from all these points, what you find there actually, the climate change has three aspects. The first aspect is the science of climate change. When I say science of climate change, that means we should tell the public the correct statement whether who should utilize the proper data. It is not that whatever data is uh, available to us, whatever data is available to us, based on that, we will do some study and say that climate change. No. We should use authentic data sources. We should use the qualitative data. We should use the sufficient period of the data. Later, we should do analysis and find out the detection. That is why it's climate change detection. We should detect the climate change in terms of the basic parameters like temperature, rainfall, etc., cloudiness. And also in terms of the derived parameters of the indicators like disasters, say if they have cold air, cyclones, etc. The next point comes once you have detected, then you have to execute it. Is it because of the climate change? Say, for example, I found a trend in the frequency of cyclones, or found a trend in the frequency of rainfall. Is it because of the climate change? Is it because of the artificial greenhouse gases emitted by the more common man? So that is called the attribution. The attribution science has not grown sufficiently. So there is enough scope there for to work on attributions. So attribution, if you want to prove that you have to go for sensitivity study, you have to go for modeling, and you have to analyze what is the uh, trend in particular gas, for example, methane, and how it is related with the change in frequency of cycle uh, frequency of the different events. So that is called attribution. So these are the two aspects: detection, attribution, which are the responsible scientific method. Globally. So there we have got the scope to work together, and then also we can work together with the international department and the extra parts. So next comes the adaptations and mitigations. The adaptation and mitigations are full of actions from the first one, the science of climate change. Therefore, this year also I think brought out three different volumes. One is the climate change science part, then the detection, then the mitigations. And then the adaptation and mitigations. So let us go to the next slide, please. So, so these are some of the practices with respect to adaptation. So that changes in land use, relocation, emergency, and business order to plan, objects or hardening of building and infrastructure, residential programs, promoting adaptations, health programs, etc. There is no such sector which is not be necessary for each and every farmer, each and every fisherman, each and every business person, each and every industrialist, and whatnot. So therefore, that type of adaptation will depend upon the science. So therefore, we have the responsible persons to provide the scientific facts. And after that, the adaptation strategy also needs science. There will be there will be involvement of other scientists to develop the adaptation technology. Then comes the mitigation. So I will go for mitigation. For example, energy is the, energy is the major source. People talk about I mean, other primary also talks about you have to go for alternative energy. You have to go for alternative energy. What are the technology? How can we adapt it? How can we mitigate it? How can we go for mitigation so that we can mitigate the adverse impact of climate change? Uh, so these are some of the facts which I have mentioned here. Next, please. So when we come to the disasters, therefore, what we find actually, the a disaster will occur. There are various actions: pre-disaster, during disaster, post-disaster. There are various actions, and all these actions are are aimed to the response. That's the response of the disaster managers, depending upon the various uh, early warning or various informations provided during disaster, before disaster, and post disaster. Also, there is another part that is called the recover. After the disaster, there is a, also an entire need to recover or to reassure the mass. So, mitigation, prevention, decision, risk reductions, uh, all these things you will find, they all revolve around one term that is called as multi hazard early warning system. Early warning is the first and foremost there. If you can provide multi hazard early warning systems, 
during disaster, before disaster, post disaster, so that there can be preparedness actions, there can be mitigating actions, and hence, therefore, that disaster is reduction by the adequate response. But to carry out all these aspects of disaster management, you need a national policy, you need a national disaster act, you need national national, national national plans, national guidelines, institutional mechanisms. <coughs> Already we have got in India institutional mechanisms. And uh, it is improving over the years, as our first know. But still, there is scope. So, for example, there is an occurrence of earthquake. Okay. At the same time, on cyclonic study, we have got SOP for earthquake, we have got SOP for cyclone. But what is the interest of these two SOPs, the synergized SOP, so that we can respond jointly when there is a common occurrence of earthquake and cyclone? Similarly, there could be earthquake and heat wave, there could be tsunami and cyclone, there could be tsunami and heavy rainfall. So, all these things. Uh, there is still scope to go for improving our all these aspects like national policy and issues of mechanism and guidelines. Uh, but uh, I want to mention here that uh, India is such a country where we have got 80 percent of people getting the multi hundred animal system. We are far ahead of many countries, the least developed countries and IMS countries, where we do not have animal system at present. Therefore, the government has given a call and learning for all, land action for all by 2025. Okay, next please. So these are the countries you can find out that um, how the percentage of development countries with less less than multi other systems. Many countries do not have any act, many countries do not have policy for multi other systems. In that sense, India is uh, far ahead. Next please. Now let us look at uh, what we have at present. We have got an integrated system. We have an integrated multi other system. We have got the surface applications. <coughs> Satellite radar, RSW, and the radiation deployment, and biological applications, the pro radars, then aviation uh, weather observation systems, and ships. Now, also, we want to outsource the public observations. You can, if you are finding that it is raining in the second railway station of standing, immediately you can go to mobile app of the government department and inform that it is raining in the railway station. And that information can be utilized as a set one set two. They can give warning for the next few hours when it will rain again. And that one, that information can be utilized to validate our models, validate our forecast, and hence it will improve the science. So that citizen science we have adopted for the last few years, and we have come up with the mobile app, and also the uh, internet facilities, etc. Now, so you'll be happy to know that uh, we have got a very good integration of all types of observations. We have got decisions of our system where we integrate all types of observations. And from that, uh, we go for uh, <coughs> uh, development uh, of uh, real time analysis. and. Uh, we generate what the current system is of the atmosphere, ocean, etc. And uh, at the same time, all these data are integrated into modern modeling systems. We have got different modeling systems uh, of various types, like global models, regional models, deterministic models, and several models. We have got models in the resolution of two kilometers at present, that is, cycle high resolution metric grid space. Plus, we have got a model of ensemble type with resolution of 12 kilometers. We have got lower models with resolution of 12 kilometers. We have got the cyclone specific models also, HR, etc. Also, we have got models of polar regions. You will be able to know that. So, with all these models, uh, you will find that why you have to make some models, why not only one model? I am assuming that with the help of this diagram. So, what you find actually in this diagram, in the global model, so this is uh, uh, zero up to 120 hours as a specific year. What you find is it's multi model ensemble or single model ensemble, time model ensemble. Their focus should start here and focus should be done in three days before towards five days. It cannot be utilized for day one forecast. Now, the global model of two, say six hours or twelve hours, global model output cannot be utilized. I think those are modelers can understand why these models cannot be utilized in the hours. The regional models, again, up to three hours or five hours, you cannot utilize the regional models after that to utilize for 14 hours. The now question when you go for it can be utilized from the very beginning of the few hours, and beyond that, it cannot be utilized. So, therefore, considering all these, we utilize all types of models. One thing is that this is the limitation, other thing is that we have a consensus, multi model consensus. Then we have to provide a warning of five days. And globally, people will show the warning of the five days, and we also show warning of five days. Next, please. <coughs> Okay, so this is the target uh, that the government has fixed, but I will tell you when I took over, I took this responsibility that we should go for every household should get early warning and every time they should get early information.
then what we did that we went for gis even if we do not have observation at particular point you can interpolate you can find the information gis information and that are everywhere if you go to our web page you can find out everywhere what is the temperature and what is the wind you can find out what is the wind there so every household and every time information has to be generated and of course it will improve further with the densification of observations and improvement in forecast system next please now let us look at what I say that uh, the, we, are, we have ventured into another area where we are not telling simply about the weather, what we will be tomorrow, but we are telling that what the weather will do tomorrow. That is called the impact risk forecast. When I say impact risk forecast, that means I am from the information, the transfer to translate the weather information into the impact estimation. And that impact estimation will have the response scenario. Once you say the impact, so there will be inundation in rolling areas. Nearby radio stations, get into the slums, etc. What will be there? That we will take action. We have to keep from slums. So the response section that will depend upon the impact estimations. So therefore, what we do with weather analysis and forecast data? We will extract the relevant information from that and place it into situational context. For example, if it is the month of March, there is a heavy rainfall. So nothing will happen. But if it is the month of August, already there is standing water and there is heavy rainfall activity, then it will lead to the disaster uh, situations. So therefore, the Let's see the situation, but similar for example, it is heavy rain there, but heavy rain occurring in further that. What does it matter actually? But heavy rain occurring in Jaipur, Pakistan, Jaipur, it matters. The situation of constraints, this is a technical consideration. Then what we have done actually, we have prepared an impact matrix, every district wise, every city wise. We have gone up to all the cities, uh, capital city, and some smart cities, and uh, city specific, soft city specific information is being generated. Now, this is just an example of the southern wise uh, impact of the uh, morning color ports, the green color ports there. So, while doing all these uh, uh, translation, whether translation is impact estimation, what do you find actually? <coughs> when as a forecast, I say that my forecast is uh, very important. I have told very good. Why you have not taken action? I feel that no, no, action should have been taken. But at the same time, if you consider the contest scenario, there are a lot of social actions. There are a lot of actions required by the people in this particular sector. sector. So this is another um, ways. This is another ways. They were working in the independently. They are not working together. They will work together. Comes at time when these two will work together. Not only should work together, but the free flow of data and information, joint development of the uh, system, then we will have an ideal impact based forecast system. We are working towards that. So next please. So we have the impact estimations. We are doing next please. Next. You can find out now on the website uh, where we have got the impact is forecast in GIS for maximum temperature, minimum temperature, heat wave, cold wave, rainfall, 24 hours, 3 hours, impact is left, uh, then cyclone services, light services, urban ecology, map pass, regular models, economic services, aviation services, transport. So all these things now we put up, but still we have to go a long way. There are many services <coughs> which has to be converted into impact based information in two cents to drive So that will happen to us. Next please. Yeah, so this is just an example of what we have uh, done with respect to that. So this is the uh, uh, mechanism, all of you know, that river and flooding. We have the India Waters Department, Central Water Commission, they work together to provide uh, the flood forecast for each river basin. We provide flood forecast for five days now for 153 river surfaces. You will happen to know that the heavy rainfall running across is increasing. And at present this year, it has become 79%. If I for us ahead, if we say that there will be heavy rainfall over, say, coastal Andhra Pradesh, there will be heavy for the 80% of others. So that is our accuracy at present. Heavy rainfall is very tricky. We have achieved the of 80% at present. We have introduced another parameter, that is called the fast flow guidance. The South Asia fast flow guidance, we provide for fast flow entire South Asia. But this is just an example of second Yasa crossing near Shaya Balaso. And this is the area which we have that there will be intense separate one between two plots. This is a plot threat area. Okay. And the battery threat color also, the high threat is there. And that the area is uh, having the resolution of 4 km to 4 km. The water set, 4 km to 4 km is indicated whether there will be cluster or not. So it is a very useful product. It is uh, in plan now for 1 km by 1. So this is the urban flood area um, uh, mapping. What we are doing actually is from Y in Chennai. We have done it, but uh, we are trying for all uh, major cities uh, with augmentation of the operational network. And gradually we are going for those several cities like the ninth and Kolkata next, then Delhi also happening up. And then we will try to figure out the things that are not. But Vishakotnam does not experience that type of very 
which are the busy areas, but towards, but the immediate we are going for the uh, after Mumbai International, we are going for Kolkata and uh, Guwahati and India. <coughs> okay, next please. So this is the cycle warning system. All of you know that it is an integrated system starting with. 15 days ahead, we give a forecast. It's called as extreme range forecast. So the genesis will take place or not. So this is uh, uh, updated every Thursday and provides forecast for next two weeks. Then after that, uh, when we find on the telecoms that it's possible, we provide particular weather output. Just go back it. Particular weather output. And then uh, from that, uh, it uh, starts giving more specific information. And uh, then when the low pressure area forms, we provide the forecast. Now, at the end, uh, we are providing a specific forecast which is not being provided anywhere in the world. That is called the pre Genesis pattern forecast. That means the Genesis in any world, Genesis has not occurred. We say Genesis with depression forms. Before the Genesis of depression, we provide a forecast that what is the track, what is the intensity, where it will be after three days or five days. That is your pre Genesis uh, uh, forecast. So, in the pre Genesis forecast, what we do actually, we expect where the Genesis is there. Uh, up to three days or five days, whatever possible we can. And uh, <clears throat> once there is a test of repression, then we, have, uh, we start our own forecast. It goes like this, as it is shown here for cyclone out there. And it provides all information track up to five days, intensity five days, structure, structure means the wind distribution around the system, length of point in time, adverse weather in terms of heavy rainfall, wind and storm surface, and then the expected protection surface. Specific sector bulletins are issued, a post based warning. And then, of course, we have the gym cases, big forecast, and postal weather, smoke warning, anything. Those are sectors. Uh, the same medicine has been the offshore of them. So, what happens actually in 2021? We have been cycling down there by no fissure and died in our case. But unfortunately, some people died in ONPC. So, Home Minister asked me, So, what happened actually? I don't know. We have been the forecast, fissure did not die. But why they died? They, 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 they did not take our forecast so, seriously. They told we are showing that forecast, but they followed the forecast given by a private party. So that is generous. No doubt is providing forecast, and everyone should accept it. So the Home Minister of Arab to Home Secretary that a circular should be so that whatever it may be following, but they have to act upon the great and So that has been the change in SOP because of the disaster, the second time they occurred in one to see. From post monsoon season of 2021, ONGC and many other offshore operations they are being provided specific graphical bulletin, textual bulletin, So, this is the new phenomena what we have done there, apart from all these things, uh, and the accuracy, what you know that there is a big point for us accuracy with last cyclone, which was near the Mahaburam. Uh, we have introduced a dynamic impact forecast. What I discussed a little earlier, this is a dynamic impact forecast. It has been brought by the other side. And I was uh, there in the technical team. And uh, uh, this is what this for entire coastal coastal states, all coastal states. Here for second now. Okay. This is the wind forecast. In which way this is what the wind is passing from your view, if you remember the maximum we was here, then you can make this. And then this is the flood forecast. Which districts will have the flood threats, etc. and how much it is in the color codex. And this is the SARS forecast, what is the type of SARS uh, in different parts of the uh, uh, districts in Kota that SARS occurs. So, this information they have to block uh, the government officer, SARS and and district collectors. Uh, they have the username and password, they can access it, and they can utilize it, and they can take it from that. Not only that, we have introduced a SARS forecast. So, we calculate you know, what is the number of electric poles which are going to be you know, I mean, approved or bent, what is the number of telephone lines, what is the amount of electrical lines. Okay, then these are all converted into the economic terms. And accordingly, an estimate is prepared how much is the economic loss expected. And you will have to know that in the recent time, government of India is releasing fund before the cyclone hits the coast. That is not the case earlier. Why? The response action can be done immediately after the passage of the cyclones. So it is impossible because of this subject of reference. So therefore, now we have moved in cyclone forecast, not only impact forecast. This forecast was to loss forecast. So that is the need of the hours. That accordingly we are people. But still, there is scope to work in this direction to improve the impact forecast, risk assessment, and loss forecast. Next, please. <coughs> so this is uh, of um, uh, the forecast accuracy. 
um, you can see here that um, uh, error stack forecast errors during uh, during uh, various versions. Uh, so this is 23 to 8, then 9 to 12, then 13 to 17, then 18 to 20, then 21. So gradually, you will see these versions means there is a different introduction of different technologies during that period. You will find that gradually over the years the error is decreasing. If you just get that forecast error, uh, 12 to 16 and 17 to 22. About 20 to 100% improvement in fact of the and this is the trend in which over the years how the progress skill is improving. Next, please. So, this is uh, with respect to thunderstorm, which is killer nowadays in terms of lightning. So, what we have done actually, we have developed a lightning mining system in 2019, and in 2018. In uh, Delhi and uh, Agra region, there was a massive thunderstorm. 82 people died. Then there was even cry and then they called a meeting of uh, the service of uh, Prime Minister's service. And uh, we went there, Dr. Kedra and myself went uh, for that meeting. It was busy at that time. And uh, we committed that, yes, we'll uh, have the lightning warning system next year. So Dr. Rajivan was the secretary. We met with tax team, I was the chair of tax team. We came up with a modeling system. In April 2020, the system was introduced and lightning warning was introduced. And India is among the five countries only who have the lightning warning system. And with that, uh, there's been development, a lot of development in the Ministry of Arts Sciences, the IITM, and Central of Arts, the development of that system. And we have got now almost uh, 1116 stations where we are providing lightning warning systems, every district has a lightning warning system. Now we are going to every block and concert level here who have the lightning warning system. This is a verification frequency. What talks about? Uh, 24 hours under some forecast, if you just look at the product notification, it's about 80%, it's about 0.47%. So, there is significant, tremendous improvement in thunderstorm of detection and early warning. Next, please. So, this is with respect to the heat wave. It is about 0.9 to POD, 0.9 to 92% accuracy in reducing the heat wave condition. And heat action plan is implemented over 100 cities across northern India and central India. Heat action plan is a plan which is developed by IMD, NDMA, and some state government. And combined, and institutions like the medical facilities and municipal corporations. Doctors are also involved there. And this heat action plan helps to mitigate the impact of the heat waves. The number of deaths also decreased in the heat plan. It was 2015, when in Andhra Pradesh, if you remember 2015, how many people died? Over 2,000 people died in the country in same was the case in 2005 in 1998. But now, of course, the number of days to be there. So, this is uh, just an example. I told this is the feature of uh, uh, deaths, how it decreases. Yes. And this is the death toll in the particular cyclones, how it has decreased over the years. So you can find out. So, there is a no cyclone in recent 10 years where the death has exceeded 100 in any particular state or any particular country. It has not held only, next please, it has not held only the India, but also all the countries in the region, if you just look at any country, where there also the death has not reduced, has not gone beyond 100. Now you come to one dissemination system. Yes, uh, there has been uh, uh, sufficient development in ICT in the country. We have utilized all the ICT. We have adopted all the new um, technology, like OIFs. We have got Mosomax, we have got Damini. For lightning, most of the general region, temples for it. But of course, Puma, central government agency, uh, also finds a place there. And we have got uh, APIs, a number of APIs. All the state governments are utilizing our APIs now, digital forecast. Forecast is by and it is utilized. It is using IBIS forecast. Take the Apple, it is using IBIS forecast. If you consider uh, the food supplier, for example, tomato, it is taking IBIS forecast. So this is the this is the new era that come up where you have got the combination of integration of the society and the science. So I asked the matter, why do you want forecast? They told we are suffering because of the thunderstorms. Because they are the their suppliers, they are going on the bikes. See, so there is thunderstorm, they are held up, they get drenched. So food food is also spoiled. Similarly, if I have a forecast for say heavy rain for thunderstorm and they have prepared, they have not taken the forecast, the food is is lost. There is a loss. So therefore, people like Zamato, huh? they also. So for example, phone pay. So they wanted our forecast. Why do you know, want our forecast? Have your forecast so that people will be more people will use our uh, uh, <laughs> oil. 
So these are the point where one of those days where uh, mythology or Vedapakash was not uh, believed. But nowadays it is not only believed, but people take action on the Vedapakash. Therefore, we are also having more responsibility now. You have to think twice before issuing any impact of forecast. It should not go wrong. At least, even if it should be correct. So now we have come to the dedicated the mobile, uh, um, dedicated um, uh, We have got the videos. Nowadays, we will introduce the videos. For the English, you can very well find the video in local language and also in English. And, uh, to reach out last time, we will introduce the games and having the space station information with the ISRO, which is developed. It happened after certain working. When focus was correct, but people died in the deep ocean because the fish of Kerala, they went inside, far behind. They could not release, and hence they could not escape. They were lost. So after that, we said that we should have a system where you can reach out to the people. Actually, as for the rule, fishermen should not go beyond our coastal water. But they go into deep sea. But whatever it is, since they are going to deep sea because of their livelihood. Because now, because of the climate change, once the temperature rises, the uh, fish has decreases. So therefore, uh, they go. So you cannot say that it is their uh, responsibility of their mistake. So it is our responsibility was that we should reach out to the fishermen, those who are in the out at sea, deep sea. So that we have introduced now the games and navig system to ask this problem. But immediately what is they did yesterday, by GHF said one ship, other ship, other ship, other ship, and there also it was communicated up to 250 kilometers. Also, came up with an archaic system which has the reach up to 465 meters from the sea to the help of DJ uh, uh, Lighthouse. Okay. So, now also we have come up with uh, YouTube. You can find on YouTube, Instagram, blogs, Facebook, Twitter, social media. Social media has become the main way. You will find everything right around people go on circulating the message. Next, please. So, this is the future. I was talking about that we should have. Uh, and hello chat. Now everything I have talked about the economic terms, okay? This is the value chat. We will do the economic students, they can understand. So value chat is like that, that we should go to the end product. That means observations, then modeling, then forecasting, super learning, sectoral applications, input guarantee, which should result into impact as forecast and the expected warning for common man, for sectoral users, for industrial plants, for economic plants. So, <clears throat> therefore, we need to upgrade each and every system of the recent quarterly forecasting, etc. The basic objective is that to minimize the losses, the loss of lives and also the uh, losses to property. So, we want to outsourcing the place of the equipment also. Artificial intelligence, machine learning is a big boost nowadays. People have come out with the technology that can be used. So, that I used to say the data can be converted to value if we go for the data science. And in the big data concept, the clouds, the high, we have the high performance computing system for the model modeling. But even you try to attach the intelligence, you can use big data, data analysis, infographics, and modeling also. And both can work together. They will not be different from each other. They will grow complementary to each other. And that is the um, future. We are starting for that, the dual engine concept. Not only for improving the forecast, but also the impact is forecasting. What also to reach out last night? Communication also can be improved. They have got this problem. Okay. So, with all this, thank you once again for giving an opportunity to speak to all of you. And I really very fortunate to be in the presence of like scholars like sitting here, those who are the masters in the field. And I don't know whether I told correctly or not. If there is any mistake in my statement, please excuse me. Students, I tried to show you. Are to expose you the burning science. I try to ignite you. There are many fields where you can work as an internship, where you can take up the small school projects, where you can work with the faculties, and you can come up with new ideas. No idea is bad. Just think out of the box that you are right. Okay? So don't feel shy. As a, as a learner, I'm telling you, while asking the questions, while discussing with the student speakers. It is your duty to think new, think creative, and you can sustain. It will be successful. You will be successful afterwards, not immediately, but think big and act hard. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I don't know if you 
global warming, the glaciers will melt and oceans uh, and there will be flooding and many towns and coastal towns and flooding. So, we made a long way to forecast just as our long way to forecast the weather. We made a long way to forecast for our climate to say that within 10 years, 50 years, how many years, the glaciers will melt. And we made a long way to forecast. Yes, yes, yes. So, he is asking whether there is a forecast of the climate. It is there. There is a forecast of 2200. 2050, 2100. I scored this forecast in one of the slides. Okay, precipitation is like 20, temperature is like 20, intense cyclones are like 20, glaciers are expected to melt more, sea level rise, water production levels are given. So these forecasts are given. These forecasts were not given earlier by the Minister of Health Science of IMD. But since last year, our model has been also model of the to provide a tool to see at the moment. And that's called the art system model. It is just about 30 kilometers, and this model is being run by the Center for Climate Change Research, located in Indian Stock. So it is there. Already beginning, this is some models. Everybody provides, especially that some evidence from um, is uh, prepared by the demo and given. Mm -hmm. Say the time period, when the glaciers will rise, and when the See, there are still some uncertainty. Exactly at what time it is very difficult. Already it is melting. Okay. There will be accelerated melting depending upon the magnitude. It is exactly you can say it's not a focus, but the projection. And this projection is based on the RCP, different pathways. Okay. So there are different pathways like 4.5, 8.5, and the growth area is 4.5, 8.5. what will happen to the sea level rise, according to what will happen to the island temperature. Etc. So that were different projections in the data. It is not a fixed one given that the problem here. Regarding satellite report, yes, satellite has gone leaps and bounds. And um, uh, satellite again here in India, satellite uh, data are being placed in a data lake to identify systems, etc. And then our parts will hold you. In the models of the satellites we can use good. And globally, we get all satellite data from all satellites, and our data also goes. And these satellite data are interested in the modelization models. Eighty percent data in the model are from satellites. Okay, but it is another issue whether satellite data are good or bad. Certain satellite data will not be same as data from Gara or data from the other Quality is poor. But what do you do in the remote areas? You see, in hills, satellite is the only source for support the models. And it helps to improve the forecast. It is a sensitive experience. About 20 to 30 percent of the accuracy of the model is improved by the satellite data. But satellite data as such is not a predictor. The model is a predictor. It goes in the Why is it that we need to this future projections to finish by as far as the other finish gets cut? Very good. Let's continue.
So what are going to be there will be disasters. There will be cloud wars. There is no doubt in it. Human sense will be there. There will be landslides in our different states, in the human region, and sometimes it goes in terms of So we have no facts. So therefore, uh, there is uh, no need for research forecast for that. We should prepare for that. It will be there. So what do you think? There is a frequency number of the five or seven, etc. You have to prepare. What is the number one? You need to prepare. Okay. Focusing perhaps for next uh, season one. So actually, we will focus for temperature and hence the cold day. So if you cold day focus, the PCR frequency of cold day will be less. The cold day will be less intense because we are expecting normal, below normal temperature of North India. Yeah. But Central India and Northern part of Peninsula will be below normal temperature. So therefore, there could be some cold day conditions in Northern part of Peninsula and Central India. But Northwest India, we do not be experiencing cold day conditions this year. It may not be so frequent cold day conditions. Thank you, sir. Um, next, next slide. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Made by India as a personal society. But my personal uh, I mean, I Thank you. That is another I have already purchased from you from your uh, for library. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay. Hello to everyone. I am Jibuji, Department of Metrology. Now I am here to vote out thanks. On behalf of Department of Metrology and Oceanography, I feel privileged to propose vote of thanks on the air of today's distinguished lecture. First, I am ever grateful and thankful to the Chief Guest, Dr. M. Mohupatra Garu, Director General IMD, for his presence. I ought to thank for honor. Our beloved principal, Professor K. Srinivasrao Garu, Dynamic Register, Professor V. Krishna Mohan Garu, and Energetic Scientist, Dr. Somanath Dutta Garu, for his presence. I am also thankful to the IMD Director, Sunanda, and his team, retired faculty of this department, teaching faculty, postdoctoral fellows, research scholars, alumni, juniors, participants, actually, student friends, non teaching staff of the department for their active involvement. And special thanks to the Computer Center, Vamshi and Chaitanya and Surendra. I thank print and electronic media for their wide coverage. Please don't think otherwise if I forget anyone. Once again, thank you, Ananda. Jai Hill. And now I would like to request everyone to stand up for national anthem.